Well, good morning everybody and welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this Tuesday the 15th of, um, 16th sorry, of um, February or Shrove Tuesday. Maybe you got up this morning and you've already had your first uh, dose of pancakes uh, today. Um, we're saving ourselves for this evening because um, we're going to be with uh, uh, online with the staff this evening making pancakes, uh, Ben and I. Um, so we're going to have our, our pancakes um, then. We're going to experiment with lots of interesting uh, different fillings for pancakes. So I'm just going to let my cat in, which is all out, which is scratching at the door. There we go. <coughs> um, <laughs> uh, a filling I like, which goes back to uh, my younger days. When I left school, aged 18, uh, I went and worked in my uncle's hotel in the Channel Islands in Jersey um, for um, the summer season, uh, which was uh, great fun. It's a hotel called the Chalet Hotel. It uh, doesn't exist anymore, sadly. My uh, uncle and aunt, uh, Ron and Maura Atkins, uh, they were a lovely couple. They were a sort of um, a genuine East End uh, couple. Um, they weren't blood relatives or uncles. They were close friends of my grandparents and uh, but I'd always referred to them as uncle and aunt and uh, um, Ron was one of those lovely characters very sort of down to earth self-made man but never forgot his um, humble roots and uh, he'd uh, run a car dealership in um, uh, in the UK and I think that's how he befriended my grandfather originally uh, and then they sort of went into the hotel business Anyhow, I worked out in the hotel for a summer season, uh, sort of doing all sorts of things from running the bar to being a waiter, etc, etc. And um, one of the things we had to learn to do was to, um, uh, well, they called it, of course, it was supposed to be a crepe because it was uh, it was far posher then. But uh, what was very in trend at the time, if you can remember, um, uh, everything with orange was in trend. So duck all orange was... Um, seen very much as a, 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 an incredible thing. Uh, but one of the things that was on the menu uh, for puddings one night a week or desserts at this hotel was um, uh, uh, crepes with Grand Marnier. <laughs> and uh, we had this chef come in from, who worked for Grand Marnier, the liqueur, the orange liqueur. So we had this chef come in and he taught us all how to, um, you know, uh, basically flambe these crepes at the table. Now the crepes were already cooked. Uh, they were pre-cooked by our proper chef uh, in the kitchen. And uh, what we would do is warm them up and set them on fire, basically, uh, which is quite interesting. So when uh, you know people ordered this, it was a bit of a showy thing. We had a, a, a trolley with a sort of a gas burner, I think, or a primer that would come out and a sort of very nice um, copper fry pan, from what I can remember, and this sort of Grand Monnier. And um, then we would sort of be at the table <coughs> and um, I think the portion was two of these crepes uh, that would then have um, grot. You'd, you'd sort of put them in the fry pan and um, pour the Grand Monnier over it. And you were taught how to set it alight to flambe, flambe it without hopefully setting the, uh, uh, the guests or the restaurant or hotel on fire. And I think they would have two crepes as a, <coughs> as a portion. Um, so that was it sometimes just with... A sprinkling of sugar or um, uh, um, I think maybe even a special ice cream that I think our chef had made that a little scoop of it you put there anyhow uh, so pancakes of Grand Monnier. Um anyhow we, we got quite a taste for these because um, uh, at the end of the the chef would make up so many pancakes um, you know he'd sort of guess how many people would want these and it was normally quite a lot. It was quite popular because all you had to do, in a sense, was once you'd done it once in the restaurant and the other guests had seen, you know, the waiter, somebody coming up, pushing a trolley and flambeing this and um, uh, <laughs> and serving to them, everybody wanted it, of course. However, there were often quite a few pancakes um, left over. And uh, once you'd sort of shut the restaurant down and all the cleaning up had been done. We had a great chef. He was um, a <coughs> uh, <coughs> Norwegian guy. And um, uh, yeah, so once we'd done all the clearing up and everything back in the kitchen, uh, we'd be making ourselves 
Flambe, Grand Marnier uh, pancakes, which was uh, uh, which was nice. So um, I I do have to venture out to the shops there. I think Grand Marnier is very expensive, but if I can find a you know miniature of it or something, I might uh, I might uh, go back there. But as they say, you know, when you sort of taste things or try things again that you you tried when you were sort of eighteen or nineteen and you thought it was fabulous, you sometimes in adult life eat the same stuff again and think, gosh, why ever did I, uh, did I eat that? Anyhow, uh, pancakes. So um, uh, uh, today, if you haven't had them, I <coughs> hope you have some today. We're going to have ours this evening, and um, uh, looking forward to uh, <coughs> looking forward to that. I have to say, one of my I I don't have a particularly sweet tooth. I have to say, though, um, my wife for Valentine's Day made one of her fantastic um, New York baked cheesecakes, which is about that thick. Um, and it is just absolutely delicious. We love it. And, uh, I've had to hide the last two slices from everybody, <laughs> but, um, it's lovely, but I don't normally have very sweet tooth. I'm much more into savory things. So I am the sort of person that can quite happily pass up a slice of chocolate cake or, or something like that. There's one or two puddings or cheesecake I love, but there's one or two puddings or things that I like, but um, I don't have a particularly sweet tooth, very savoury tooth, which is why when we were in France and we used to go to Brittany an awful lot, but a friend that lives out in uh, Brittany, so many of our family holidays were in Brittany. And um, <clears throat> what I love are the galettes, which of course are the savoury, um, uh, the savoury pancakes that the French do. Um, which are made with a sort of a, a brown flour and uh, they put all sorts of lovely things in it like you know you get ham and eggs or creme de champignon or all sorts of delicious fillings they put in and actually those I think are lovely I actually prefer I would prefer one of those a savoury pancake to a pancake uh, completely covered in Nutella or something like that but uh, <clears throat> but there we go so pancake day which means tomorrow of course is the beginning of lent is ash wednesday and um uh <clears throat> very strange because last year we did begin lent i remember we had the service in church and we had started some lent film nights and i think we managed to have two of our film nights before um lockdown was imposed i think it was just the week before our wedding anniversary which is the 26th of march <clears throat> so we'd started lent but here we are <clears throat> five weeks into five weeks or so into the current lockdown and it's still not clear when this um, lockdown is going to end though hopefully next uh, Monday um, the PM will announce the roadmap as it's called to to how we will slowly move out of this but um, looks like we're going to be in some form of lockdown or restrictions for some time to come so unfortunately we're not able to <clears throat> Mark Lent with a service in church but we are going to do it online and um, I'm going to send the link out today and the sheet so I've prepared the sheet here this is based on the first part of the liturgy for the beginning of Lent it would normally move into a communion service but we can't do that so <clears throat> um, uh, it's, it's quite a lovely liturgy so I hope you'll better join us now we are going to do this on zoom because in a sense it's going to be the beginning of our Lent uh, course um, so the link, I'll send the link out again, uh, or Mike will very kindly with this. Um, <clears throat> so we will be on Zoom tomorrow night for this um, service, um, though I will broadcast it live, uh, the service live on um, uh, Facebook as well. But then after that, a week tomorrow, <clears throat> we will be doing our online um, Zoom course, which is looking at prayer and spirituality and how personality types figure into that and that will only be on zoom i won't be broadcasting that live on facebook as well so if you do want to join us for that then please uh, use the zoom link that you get today it'll be the same link every week um so uh, what you should receive uh, hopefully today or tomorrow morning is uh, the order of service which is on one side the readings for ash wednesday which is on the other there is also a hymn sheet we'll sing two hymns tomorrow night um, and uh, there is a postcard um, that I've prepared. It is postcard size. I hope it will print out on your printer. I did have a bit of trouble trying to, to print it out. <clears throat> but it's basically the Ash Wednesday cross with the Ash Wednesday prayer. And I just hope, in a sense, you can keep that on you or 
by your bed or wherever you are, your desk or somewhere, and just read that little prayer every day as a, as a focus for Lent. Now, the other thing we've been offering uh, for Lent is this magazine called Lent Extra, which is um, 47 um, uh, daily reflections and prayers. And also the, the beginning of the magazine, the first few pages, has some very interesting articles from uh, various people about, um, uh, about Lent and hope. Um, but basically, then after that, what you have, if you, I think, turn to page 10, obviously I've got a hard copy here. We've emailed this out as a PDF, which you can download, and you should be able to, if you use things like an iPad or um, uh, Amazon Firepad or something like that, as a PDF, you should be able to put it onto your iPad and read it that way, or you should be able to print, out, print it out. It is quite, you know, it's 36 pages, so if you print it all out, but hopefully you can use that. And then what you have, as you can see, is um, daily reflections through Lent, which gives you um, two Bible readings to look at and um, then uh, a little bit of reflection. Um, so I hope this helps to you know, accompany you uh, <coughs> on your uh, Lenten journey. If you haven't received this um, and you'd like a copy of it, then please do send me either a message or if you are on the mailing, you should have received it from Mike. It was a zip file. We had to compress it. So you would have received it as one of those zip files. It is safe to open because when you open it up, it will be a PDF version of this magazine. However, if you, if you haven't received one and you'd like one, then just send us a message and we'll get that out to you. If you would prefer a hard copy, I have produced some hard copies for some of our... Um, congregation who who aren't online or don't receive emails um, but if you would prefer a hard copy then just send me a, a, a message and I'll print one out for you and I'll uh, on the church photocopier and I'll, I'll get a copy to you so that's Lent Extra um, <clears throat> I hope you find that um, useful and that you enjoy our sort of gathering our, our course where we're going to talk about prayer and spirituality um, over the coming weeks li leading up to Easter. Now the really good news as you probably picked up in the news is that the R rate in the UK has now fallen below one and as you probably, uh, I think we're all experts on Covid by now, but as you know when the R rate drops below one that means that the uh, disease is, is receding um, because the number of people who will catch it below one is a lot less. But of course all of these things have a time lag though the figures are coming down there are still more people in hospital <coughs> with serious forms of COVID at this point in the pandemic than there were back in April. So we do need to remember that we have got quite a long way to go on this journey. However, the good news is that uh, talking to the church wardens and things, I think things are now um, as safe as they can be for us to resume some physical worship because the figures are roughly the same as as they were during November when we were having physical worship. So this coming Sunday, uh, 10 o'clock at St Rumbold's Pentridge, there will be a said Holy Communion. That will also, um, technology permitting, because the um, they don't have Wi-Fi at St Rumbold's, it, we, I'm dependent on mobile phone signal. Um, so uh, depending on the tech, that will also be broadcast online. But that, so that's the said Holy Communion service at St Rumbold's this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock. The following Sunday, there'll be a said Holy Communion service here up at um, uh, St Mary's Handley. And that's because we haven't had a, a communion service since Easter. I think that's really what we need to do. <clears throat> As we move into March, I'm proposing we go back to a pattern of online service, a Holy Communion online service, Holy Communion. So there'll be sort of two physical services in the month of March and uh, two online um, services. I just need to look at the pattern and talk to um, and talk to the church wardens. Of course, in March we have Mothering Sunday um, and I'm my hunch is that though that would be lovely to meet in church, of course, people aren't able to meet their families and it, I don't think the lockdown is going to be lifted by that point. So I'm going to try and work it so our Mothering Sunday service is basically going to be another online Zoom breakfast church. Um, people seem to enjoy that last Sunday. Um, it was a good lively gathering and it was nice to be able to chat to people and such like. So 
Uh, my thinking is that Mothering Sunday in March will be, in a sense, an online Zoom um, breakfast-style church um, that both young and old can enjoy together. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I am very hopeful that we will be able to have Easter services. Now, I'm not sure what the restrictions will be, so as we move into Holy Week, I would love to be able to do our... Um, Palm Sunday procession and Palm Sunday service and to do the Holy Week services but I, I'm i not sure that's going to be the case so we're going to have to be a bit creative and I with my other hat on my rural field officer hat I am producing with my some of my team of the team I work with um, some different ways of celebrating Easter and some of you will remember the uh, prayer walks that we did the prayer sort of the walking services that we did um, back in the summer and the autumn Hopefully, if the weather's picked up by then, we're into spring, we might do one of those for, for some of the Easter services. Um, we, I hope to do an Easter Eve service, which will be a service of light, um, a bit like we did last time. We won't do the full Easter liturgy in church, but what I'm hoping is that um, those who want to can gather up outside the church and will light the Easter bonfire and the Paschal candle. And then there'll also be a liturgy for people to use at home and to do at home. So we're working on that. And then, God willing, um, Easter Sunday will be a Holy Communion here at uh, St Mary's and a Holy Communion um, at um, St Rumbold's. And then hopefully as we move into April and May and we hear what the lockdown restrictions as things ease up, um, we'll go back to a... Uh, weekly services we have done before um, but the <clears throat> you know the what we might call the old pattern of worship that we were using before lockdown a year ago um, uh, I think two factors just to say it, we're not likely to go back to that for quite some time and we have now got another factor which is of course that we are now moving towards the the, the starting gun has been fired and we are now moving towards forming a new benefice which will take in for uh, Farnham, Chettle and Tollard Royal. So we'll have sort of six churches or these um, five centres and because of that we're going to have to start to rethink the worship pattern uh, and how services happen. So um, that will involve a new road to being developed over the coming um, months. We need to have meetings with wardens from all these parishes and things and to look at that. So. Um, as as we move into this year, hopefully some of that will start to will start to take shape. Um, so that's really sort of Lent and um, and Easter. Now, as you probably saw, I <coughs> I had very bad cabin fever. I don't know about uh, how others find it, but I I find I sort of peaks and troughs. And um, uh, yesterday it was very odd. I felt very low yesterday, which was. Um, even though it was my day off and um, I was pleased to get out with camera and uh, walk along a bit of the coastline which was very deserted which in itself was quite eerie because I, even though I, we've only been living down here about two and a half years I've got to know these places I love to photograph them and bearing in mind it was sort of half term weekend even though Dorset weather can be a bit inclement um, you would go to these places and they would still be quite busy and um, there were a few dog walkers around who were always about but I was just surprised how empty they were and I was on one stretch of uh, beach um, and uh, it has a lot of beach huts on it. I'm amazed they survive because the water gets very very close but they do seem to survive and it was very eerie um, because you know I, I could I could see about four other bodies on the beach for as far as the eye could see from these beach huts and they were all boarded up and everything like that and uh, some of you may have seen the quote <laughs> I put in um, from HG Wells I'm a big fan of HG Wells and there's <clears throat> um, if you've ever read the war of the worlds though of course we're not fighting Martians there's a lot of similarities there about how um, you know what was deemed civilised society when Wells wrote his um, book um, that, uh, you know, everything got turned on its head. I'm just trying to find the quote now. Uh, everything got turned on its head. And um, 
Wells speaks of this sort of detachment from reality because he can no longer identify with with a reality that has gone and he can't connect to the new reality that they're living in and <clears throat> when we're keeping busy that may you know we may not notice it but um, it came down with a bump for me yesterday which was quite interesting um, you know and I think in the sense you know we're here at half term and you know back in last year <clears throat> we were talking about maybe going away this half term and doing something and of course that's not possible anyhow Wells quotes this which I just think is very powerful um, at times I suffer from the strangest sense of detachment from myself and the world around me I seem to watch it all from the outside from somewhere inconceivable remote out of time out of space out of the stress and tragedy of it all so um, I that quote came to mind yesterday when I was sort of <laughs> standing on that fairly desolate beach photographing a pretty old battered up beach hut with some very interesting texture but in a sense we need to remind ourselves that this virus has um, not only a physical effect on us but a mental effect on us and i've been surprised how that catches up on me from time uh, uh, from time to time and um, yesterday was was like that really it was very surreal <coughs> being in that space and even though in a sense <coughs> I was, you know, I was no more than 25, 30 minutes from home, um, it wasn't very far away. It was that sense of, <coughs> you know, not being able to go anywhere. And uh, as I also posted on Facebook yesterday, what I would have been, what I would have loved to have done yesterday on my day off was to have gone to Bristol and to be in a city filled with people walking around, um, to have walked in and out of shops, to have gone and sat in a cafe and had a, had a coffee. Um, to see people socialising and of course none of that can happen at the moment uh, and it's a bit surreal so um, yeah um, so in a sense it's a reminder of how not only do we have to keep an eye out for our physical well-being you know washing our hands covering our faces um, just being careful where we associate um, the other thing of course is our mental health um, and um, it's surprising how that can play with you um, and uh, um, sometimes it sort of creeps up on you unaware and you might feel very low as I did yesterday which was quite interesting you sort of feel very low and you can't really put your finger on it and you're not quite sure you know what what to do thankfully I find doing the photography and taking pictures and concentrating on the camera massively uh, therapeutic so by the time I came back um, I was lifted up but it's very it was very surreal sort of being out there um, it would have been much livelier if a huge Martian had walked uh, walked down the coastline and something like the Thunder Child had came round the corner. <laughs> but nothing so exciting. Um, <clears throat> but there we go. So um, do watch out for that as well, folks. Um, you know, look after your mental health. And, um, you know, we're lucky. Get out, take some exercise, um, take up a hobby, do some things like that. We have wonderful modern technology. Pick up the phone, chat to somebody, Zoom your friends, whatever it may be. Um, uh, you know, one of my therapeutic things, I think, which gives people a bit of a giggle is that um, I try and make Friday nights a bit special. So we, I open up the 50s cocktail bar. You can see it's closed now. It is closed. Uh, so I open up the 50s cocktail bar. I put on my disco music or whatever it is. Um, I turn the laser beams on, fire up the smoke machine and I mix a martini and, you know, just let your hair down a bit. Um, it's all important stuff that we uh, that we need to do. Um, anyhow, so uh, <clears throat> let's just move on. Let's have the Bible reading um, for today. Change the goggles. Right. Gospel according to Mark chapter 8. Um <clears throat> Verses 14 to 21. Now I might just go back a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> so here we go. Um, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. This is uh, the title of the passage. The disciples <clears throat> had forgotten to take any food. And they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Then Jesus gave them this warning. Keep your eyes open, be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And they said to one another, it is because we have no bread. And Jesus knew it. And he said to them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you not yet understand? 
Have you no perception? Are your minds closed? Have your eyes, have you eyes that do not see, ears that do not hear? Or do you not remember when I broke the five loaves among the five thousand? How many baskets full of scraps did you collect? They answered twelve. And when I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, how many baskets of scraps did I collect? And they answered seven. Then he said to them, are you still without <coughs> perception? Now, if you remember last week, I told you one of the interesting things about Mark's gospel is you get into chapter eight. And I think it's about to come up. I think the readings uh, is probably tomorrow. Uh, yeah. So the reading is tomorrow, which will have the blind beggar. Um, as you come up into chapter eight, you get this wonderful and I'll talk about it tomorrow. But it's talking about the blindness of the disciples, how they're failing to understand who Jesus is. Jesus, of course, is the bread of life, is the bread of life. And um, they're just not getting it. The penny has not dropped. And they're so wrapped up in the earthly concerns and worries. And here they're worried about the fact that um, somebody's forgotten to bring food with them on the boat. They're so wrapped up in the earthly things. And uh, in doing that, it, it's as if a veil is over their eyes or if, as if they're blind. And in a sense, in the time we face now, this um, pandemic, um, and in a sense, you know, part of, of, I suppose, what I was feeling yesterday, that, that low, was that we get wrapped up in the earthly worries. Now, it's not to say that earthly worries aren't important. Of course they are. Um, of course they are. But the danger is they can overwhelm us, that we become too wrapped up in them. We become wrapped up in the fact of, you know, when is this going to finish? When can I go down the pub? What's going on? And of course, for, for some people, these worries are really really serious you know about putting food on the table or not being able to heat their houses and things like that the trouble is 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 we can allow these things to consume us and what Jesus is trying to say is that there is another way there is another way and sometimes if we open our hearts and minds um, these worries don't become so powerful of course they're a concern and of course, if we open our hearts and minds to each other and to love each other, then also some of the practical necessities that we might worry about also get resolved. <laughs> because hopefully, you know, we feed the hungry and the poor and all of those things as well. So in a sense, um, you know, it's mindful at this time that when we feel that sort of wave coming over us of, earthly worries you know about family or friends or things like that and um, we've got quite a few in our family at the moment it has to be said um, that you know sometimes in a sense it's first recognizing that we cannot control everything we cannot control everything and then what we need to do is we need to place our trust in God we need to keep walking that pilgrim road placing one foot in front of another and trusting in the fact that Jesus walks with us. And even though we may not feel him or recognise him in the same way that the disciples on the road to Emmaus didn't to begin with, that he is there. Um, and in a sense, that's that's what's there. But tomorrow we get the blind beggar and I'll talk a little bit more about this sort of shift in Mark's gospel that we get at um, chapter 8. I was very lucky at university because um, when they closed Lincoln Theological College and I managed to blag my way into Cambridge University via the back door, <laughs> um, <coughs> the, um, I did a series on Mark and the person we had teaching us was Morna Hooker at the time. And Morna Hooker um, is a world authority on Mark's gospel. And at Lincoln, I'd already read several books of her on, on Mark in my studies for essays. And uh, I have to say that was one of the joys and privileges of Cambridge University was suddenly I was sitting in the divinity faculty uh, in a lecture hall with this rather eccentric lady with crazy wild hair who used to rub herself up and down the blackboard as she talked very animated and her gown, her lecturer's gown would end up all covered in chalk. Um, we were actually hearing it from the horse's mouth um, about Mark's gospel, so I've always had a bit of a passion for Mark. Anyhow, folks, um, uh, time to wrap up for today. Now, just to say, I will be with you, um, just get the old diary out, I will be with you uh, tomorrow. 
and uh, which is obviously Ash Wednesday. So there'll be a broadcast in the morning as usual, our 10 o'clock broadcast. And then at 7 o'clock we'll have our Ash Wednesday service. I will be, be with you on Wednesday. Though we'll have a slightly shorter morning broadcast because I do have a funeral um, at 11 o'clock uh, on Thursday. But I won't be with you this week on um, Friday and Saturday. Um, the thing that I realised yesterday... <laughs> Uh, was that I just need a little bit of time out. I think, uh, as I mentioned, we've got some issues happening in our family at the moment with illness and such like, not, not amongst us, but with parents and things. Um, so I just need to take a little bit of time out, I think. And it is half term. And uh, as I say, we would have, <laughs> Kate and I would have gone away this half term. So I am going to take uh, this Friday and Saturday off um, just to spend some time with Kate um, and the boys uninterrupted. Um, so uh, um, so uh, I hope you don't mind that, but um, that's what I'm going to do on Friday and Saturday. But I will be with you tomorrow and I'll be with you Thursday. Um, so folks, um, do have a good day. Enjoy your pancakes, uh, whatever particular flavours you have on them. Um, oh, and just quickly to say the film... That film on Netflix, uh, News of the World, starring um, Tom Hanks. It's the first Western he's ever been in. Bill had seen it. Uh, it's well worth the watch. It's a very different sort of pace to a Western. It's a lovely story. Um, so um, uh, do, uh, do enjoy that. But let's just close with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Do take care, care folks. God bless.